just copy okay. of data miner. Now, what is our data miner integration studio? From now on, I'll call it uh, this or the IS. It's a bit easier for me to uh, pronounce it. Um, in the middle, we have our data miner agents with our elements. So I just opened my agents, you as well, and there you have your own elements. An element is using a protocol. Protocol, ML file, is located on our data miner. My element communicates with devices. Uh, third party devices have some data in there, um, but you can also have some communication, some interaction with our DIS. Our DIS consists of multiple editors. We have a protocol editor, display table, reaction editor, and those are the ones we'll see today a bit more in detail on how you can, how you can use them um, and how useful they actually are. We'll see all this image you see it later again and see it more in detail. This is what we'll uh, go over today. Um, first, we'll go over the installation and licensing. All of you are already uh, ahead of that step or uh, currently uh, working on that one. Um, then we'll have a small introduction. What is the uh, NES? What is a protocol? Um, it's just a small reminder. And then we'll have a look at importing and publishing. Um, because yeah, we want to maybe get protocol from our DMA, or when we made something, we want to have it uh, available on our DMA to create elements from. Then we'll have a look on how we can easily navigate, um, we'll see something about the web browser snippets, and then our editors, our display editor, table editor, and reaction editor. And then we'll finish off with our validator, um, some live testing and debugging, and then some of the settings, um, but we'll already work with the settings uh, as we go. The installation, most of you already have uh, done this step, or not yet. Um, if you want to have uh, do this, of course, first requirement is to have a um, Visual Studio. Visual Studio uh, 2012 or later. So 15, 17, uh, 19, uh, it's all possible. Very sure. We can download our, uh, this from our CD. Uh, going to this key of fan and the and then we your account. Once you're at the <laughs> site, you can go to um, software, downloads, and then choose for name. I'll just demonstrate, because I think most of you already asked this step. So, once you connect it to our DCP, we have here the software downloads, where you can find all the versions of data miner. But underneath, you also have the IS. And there, then you choose the main, uh, main release. And the one here at the bottom, you can just double click, it will download, and it will in immediately run. So there's no need to open Visual Studio. And from there, install it, just double click um, or XA, and it will run for you. And then, uh, no, this is activated. Um, of course, you don't have a license yet. Um, there's one license for every developer seat. So, every developer in your company, if he develops um, a protocol, he needs a license, of course, which makes sense. Um, and thanks to personal uh, DCP accounts. Um, one license, um, oh, nice. uh, every uh, data miner customer gets one license for free. Um, so you can have one dedicated developer, you can already use uh, the IS and license. As soon as you have uh, more than one, um, you can request one from a nice plan team. And it's a bit manual. Now, what is the IS? The AS is a um, Microsoft Visual Studio uh, extension. So it's a plugin um, to actually allow uh, us as a developer to develop, this is nice sales, just it, it allows us to develop faster, more efficient, uh, less prone to, to errors. Um, yeah, and, and I would say, personally, my code is better using the AS. Why is that? Well, we'll see in, in detail. But if we have snippets, for example, that allow me to add codes already pre-structured, well, if I need to type all those letters, all those those numbers myself, well, there is more chance to have errors in there. 
instead of using any snippets. Um, we have a validator. So before I publish my protocol to my data miner, I press that validator button and it immediately shows me where I did maybe something wrong. We even have, again, in more detail, some color coding. What errors did I make that are critical? Minor, major. That's really useful. Oh, uh, yeah. Reducing the chance of errors. Um, it's something you, have, you, do, you don't want errors in your data miner. So using the DIS uh, can definitely help with that. I'm talking about protocols. Protocols, drivers, and we'll use each of those two words. Um, what is the driver? Um, the driver is an XML file. And in that file, we specify how our data miner or software, um, how it communicates to a certain device. For example, we have an FM device, we want to communicate to that. Well, in the driver, we specify uh, how that's done. Okay, um, what data do we want to retrieve from the device? We also specify how we want to display that data. Do we want it um, on a certain page? Do we want it just all on a meet? Do we want to have numbers? Do we want to have units in there? That's everything we can see. A driver consists of multiple blocks of code. First off, our parameters. This is where we define what we want to retrieve from the device. For example, I wanted to, to retrieve my total processor load. This is That's perfect for possible, and uh, that's something you can define in a par uh, parameter. You can also define where you want that parameter be on your element, on which page, how it should look like. You can define, for example, some units in there. You can also specify, okay, for example, my processor load, I want a lid bar. That's everything you specify in those parameters. Once we have our parameters, we can add groups. Groups is where you combine, logically, certain parameters that belong together. Because once you have those groups, using a timer, we can then call those. With timer, periodically, for example, every one minute, I want to have all my um, information regarding my boot time, the time sync to be good. I group those, and I add them to a timer. So, this already allows me, I specify what I want, I specify when I want it, it gives me already some data. Of course, yeah, we wouldn't be a Skyline if we come to a bit more than just getting data. We also want, for example, um, have something happen with a certain event. For example, I press a button and something should happen. For that, you can use timers and actions. <coughs> a timer, uh, yeah, sorry, sorry. Exactly. <laughs> a trigger. A trigger and actions. Um, so a trigger is to specify that it's a lightning bolt. Something happens, and with an action you specify what should happen. So for example, if I press a button, or if my element yes. starts on, this can all be defined in a trigger. And then the action is specified, okay, once my element starts up, then I want to get my first uh, load of parameters, uh, bolt, for example. And at last, we can finish with uh, the quick actions. And this is where we can uh, add some uh, C-sharp codes in the protocol. Um, allow us to do some bigger calculations. Um, with actions, you can, for example, add one to your parameter, number one, uh, add one every second, for example, you have a counter. With quick actions, for example, you can do a bit more. Uh, if you need to do heavy computing, um, if you need to fill in um, if you have a table, you need to convert that table to something else. That's where you would use uh, our C sharp parts. Of course, this is not a training, no, not a um, protocol training. Let's focus back again on our uh, DIS. But I want to have already yeah, a reminder of those basic blocks because they'll uh, come in handy when we see uh, some of the features. Once you install the DIS, um, you can see it a few things. First of all, uh, first of all, in our menu. In the menu, menu you see that DIS uh, word in here, and when you click it, we have a nice drop down with DMA, some of the helpers, uh, some of our nice tools, settings, help, and so forth. And then underneath, this is when you have the .bol open. So we'll do that in a second. You'll see our DIS ribbon. 
where you have that thread of age I was talking about, um, the display editor, table editor, and on the publish button. Again, you will see this all more in detail, um, but these are the two areas I will focus on. Maybe a quick interruption. Uh, the DIS menu, if you have Visual Studio 2019, is hidden behind an extension. <laughs> uh, they decided, Visual Studio decided to change the location. But, however, in the next version? Uh, I don't know, that's, uh, that's oh, yeah. a new UI of uh, 2019. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Too bad, because it's nice to have directly access. Um, yeah, I have to give an extra click there. Thank you for the note. So let's just forget about all the possibilities and go over them one by one um, to really test it out. Um, I'll mention them, I'll show you them as well, and you can follow along um, and play around with it. Um, again, as long as you focus on your own protocol and your own uh, version, um, you don't override uh, the other users. Uh, first step is uh, importing. But first I want to verify that everybody has a license already? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Almost? Almost. Almost. Okay. But uh, <laughs> is it okay by you? Yeah, yeah, carry on. Yeah. Um, my colleagues will help you out. This was if uh, you wouldn't have a license yet. Um, then you need to have, go to our disk settings. So in here, disk settings. Um, and try to log in for the first time with your DCP account, then my colleagues will get a notification, and if you send a mail, um, they'll activate it for you. But that step we already passed, which is great. Now let's go to the next step. What I want to do is I want to get um, my protocol from my DMA, red.skyMOD. I want to have it inside my Visual Studio. Of course, one way is to go to my DMA and then open that protocol there, right click, and then you can either download it, or you can select the text and save it somewhere, and then open it in Visual Studio. We have already quite some steps. That's why we have a nice import. Of course, before we can do an, export, an import, we need to specify to which data miner we want to connect, and from where we want to have that import. So first of all, we go to our this settings, go to the first step, DNA, where you fill in the host, which is either the IP or the host name from our data miner agents. In our case, it's red.skyline.de. User credentials, so user 0102, and the inspire 2019 two exclamation marks. With this nice button, you can test the connection. If it's successful, great. Don't forget to press OK to save the settings. And we go to our this DMA connect. If our connect is uh, grayed out and the disconnect is uh, black, it means you're connected. Okay. We're all there so far? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, perfect. We have a connection. Establish a connection between our Visual Studio DMA. First of all, we want to import our protocol. DMA, import protocol. You can all follow along if you want. When you click there, you will have a pop-up where you can have an entire list of all the available protocols on your DMA. Of course, in our case, French.scan.de is just um, available for this uh, training. So there's just two protocols. There's one um, that Joey will use in a later session. Um, and the other one, uh, is something I provided, and that's one we'll use in this session. So we go to this DMA, I'm connected, import protocol, and let's go for the inspire this protocol. I'll choose this one, but you again can choose your own version. With a simple press import, it immediately opens. So there's no need to go to my DMA, to copy it from there, uh, paste it, save it somewhere. Just a few clicks, and you already immediately have your protocol. Once I have it here, I can do some modifications. I can add parameters in there. You'll see it later. I can do some tweaks. 
And once I'm pleased with what I have, I now want to export it. Have it uploaded in our data miner agent. Again, you could save it somewhere on your local, um, yeah, on your local location, uh, and then the, uh, the agent itself import it from there. Or we could use our publish here. We have here in our this ribbon a publish button, and if we click that one, immediately my uh, protocol will be saved and will be updated in our data miner agent. Of course, now I didn't do any modifications, so you don't see it. But in the next exercises, you can play around with it, upload it, and you'll see that um, on the DCP, uh, sorry, on the DNA, your element will restart. So if you publish it, of course, yeah, you have a new protocol, um, or update, updated protocol. It will restart the element, you see it go down, up again, and you'll see that changes in uh, your element. Yes? But if you change the version, yeah. and you realize that mm -hmm. you need to load that one first, right? If you change the version, um, maybe you can do it. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll do it for you. We can play around for that. If I change the version and I make a um, 2, for example, a 2001, I'll publish it. What will happen in my DMA if I go to my list, all my protocols and versions? You see anything in the comments? Oh. There we go. It's not in using yet, but it's from the list. You can see it using here. Of course, in my element, it's not updated because it's still using the old version. But at least your new version is already in the VMA, and then you can just set edits or elements, uh, edits, and then you can select. Uh, the one here. It needs to be available by pressing that um, publish button. So we saw one way as well to import a protocol by using our import. Of course, there's uh, other ways. If you have something stored locally, um, you can open file uh, and open a protocol, a protocol to edit. It's perfectly fine as well. Um, or if you want to create a brand new protocol from scratch, you can also uh, new file and start from blank, or when you have the IS installed, you also have some nice templates. File, new file. In the general, you have now data miner. And there you see two templates one for a protocol and one for an automation script. I got to heard here that you also play around with automation script. Well, with those templates, you don't need to start from scratch, but you can already you can try it out, open one, and you see the entire structure of your protocol already. <coughs> of course, there aren't any parameters or very few parameters in there, um, but already something to get you started. For example, you see already some of the timers. You'll see uh, a certain group. Something to get you started. So you don't need to start from blank, because yeah, a blank page can be quite scary if you need to start. Um, so this is something available for you to get you along the way. So whatever you do, either import a protocol, open one that already uh, stored locally, or make a template. As soon as you're done, you can press that publish button, and it will be uploaded into your data miner agent. Now we have a protocol, because you just imported the one from our DMA. We want to have a look in there. We want to see what, what's in there, and we want to easily move. Um, and that's where, again, the AES, or I'll say it, most of the times is very useful. And it makes our life faster, because what would you normally do is you have your entire file, um, you scroll through it, 
uh, search for a certain parameter or the timers to the right bottom, so you can take your cursor and drag all the way down. It can take one. That's why we have in our DIS, in our tool windows, <coughs> our DIS 3 key. When you click that one, it will open the side panel. It will be shown left, but it's an uh, Visual Studio one, so you can drag it out, have it uh, pop up or underneath, the bottom, whatever you like, personal preferences. And there we have our XML structure. So, first of all, our header, with your version, the new paper calls, and so forth. And then, very interesting is the parameters. The parameters, the quick actions, the groups, the triggers, the actions, timers. So, those building blocks we saw previously in the introduction are available there. They're available, but immediately already filled in with the data that you have in your protocol. It's very nice to look at, even nicer to click, because if you select a certain parameter, it will immediately jump to that location. Which makes, of course, navigation much more easier if you're looking for a certain parameter, a certain group. Just click it, and you'll jump to there. Very nice. You can try it out, jump, uh, and travel in your protocol. And it even goes further, because if you select a certain parameter, underneath here, you'll see outgoing, incoming, but also, for example, um, columns, if you would select a table. And this is where it will show, we'll have a look in the protocol, and see the selected parameter to what it's linked. So, for example, I have here my group selected, and I can see that the incoming is my timer and my action. So I immediately know, okay, this group, well, when this timer goes off, this group will be executed. And I also need to see my outgoing. So in this group, I have my parameter. So it immediately shows the relationship between those components we have in a protocol. Again, really nice. When you go to our um, protocol itself, in our code, Next to my uh, blocks, my parameter, my groups, you have my paper clip. When you hover over there, you'll see that same list that we had previously here at the bottom. So it can happen that you're uh, looking for a certain parameter, you found it, you can hover over that paper clip and immediately see what's connected to that. And <coughs> once you have that uh, window, you can again just click it, and it will jump to that location. So this allows you, if you would, for example, start with a timer, hover over the paper clip, move to a certain group. If you then in that group, hover over the paper clip, jump to certain parameters. If that parameter is maybe connected, uh, like it shows here, to a quick action, and this allows you to actually follow the flow of your protocol. Because when you would look at it, well, just all separate components, but with this one, you also see the linking. How is every, everything linked together? We can now travel to our document, play around with it. Very nice. Of course, now, yeah, we have an existing protocol. Usually, you maybe want to have, yeah, new parameters in there. You want to create something. Um, and when you're working with SNP, uh, SNP protocol, you probably have a method available from your device. And there it says, okay, um, this parameter can be found at this uh, OID. For uh, the protocols, we have our web browser. Where can you find it? It's an integrated one. So you go to this tool windows, this web browser. When you open that one, you see again, just like we had with this tree view. One of those uh, panes here. Again, you can drag it around uh, wherever you like. And in there, you see the mid, uh, mid structure. On top, we see three tabs. First, our mid tree, our files, and our compare. With files, I'll open it. Um, with our files, you can specify where <coughs> are located. 
Oh, I have to open it for you. This tools with browser. Close solution. So by default, you already see a certain structure. However, it can be that you have um, MIPS for certain devices and you still have them stored on a certain location, and I want to see them as well. You can go to files, and here, add a certain location. Currently, I don't have uh, any, um, but you can add them. You'll, you'll see a list here, and then with the load files, they will be added to my uh, MIP tree as well. Level 3, you can drill down and see my parameters available. The third one is our compare. And this one can also be very interesting when you're working with SNP protocols, uh, is because our compare, when you press the refresh, it will compare what I have added to my MIP tree to my protocol. So, for example, if I have a specific device and I have a MIP, and I need to uh, import those parameters, and I created those parameters, it can be nice to have a refresh, and you can imme immediately see which uh, parameters are inside my protocol, and in my MIP, and which might be missing from my protocol that I forgot to implement, for example. When I go back to my MIP tree, and I select a certain uh, item, for example here, my object, and the needs, you'll see some information. Uh, for example, the uh, name of that uh, item I selected, um, which uh, OID it has, what is the access, is it read or uh, read write. This immediately allows me, if it's just a read, well, then in my protocol I don't need to implement a write because I know it's not available. So this, uh, again, can help me and guides me with the creation of uh, my parameters. Of course, it's nice to look at, but again, we go one step further. We want to add parameters. So what I could do is I could start typing. Bottom, my bottom has a certain name. For example, what do you have? The system. Description, of course, it will take me forever. So, when we have our MIP browser, what I could do is, okay, this is the one I want, so I can easily drag and drop it. Drop it, there you go. This, again, for me, generates my entire structure. Of course, this is not totally complete, um, of course, we're hoping that our MIPs um, that we get from devices are perfect. However, we're not so sure about it. So that's why we have some highlighted um, blocks, some placeholders. Those uh, are some that we still need to go over. For example, I need to give a certain ID to my parent. This needs to be uh, unique for my entire protocol. So it's something I need to uh, give my, uh, something to fill in myself. For example, just to take a big number, 4,000. And then with my tab, I can easily go over all my placeholders, just tap, 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 and check them all, and if I do, <coughs> enter, and I have my parameter. Which is, in my opinion, a whole lot faster than if I needed to type it all myself. So, very nice. You have a certain uh, item from your MIP browser, you take it, drag and drop it, uh, and it appears. It's generated for you. Now, what if I need to implement all my items in my MIP browser? I can take one, drag and drop it, take the next one, drag and drop it, take the third one, drag and drop it. Of course, as a developer, I'm not doing monkey jobs. I want it to be faster. So, again, we have our nice feature. It's not, you would expect to multi select, uh, but that's not possible. But we have, if you go to a certain location, if you right click, uh, you have 
generate parameters. <coughs> if you click generate parameters, you'll get a wizard. You can choose where you want to have your input from. In this case, we're working with mixers, so I'll just leave this one. Let's go to the next step. And here, I immediately have a list, the same as you have here, and there are three, of all the parameters. This allows me, well, I want all these parameters, for example. And maybe that one as well, and that one as well. It allows me to multi-select parameters and immediately input them. And even a step further, because we're not just adding those as a parameter, yeah. we can also immediately add them to a group and a timer. So if I have those selected, let's go to the next one. Of course, I need to specify some IDs. You don't need to specify it for everyone individually. I'm just saying, OK, start with uh, 6,000, for example. Next. It gives you the suggestion. You can change it if you like, but I'm quite pleased with that one. Let's go to the next. He asked me for a timer. I don't have a timer yet, so let me add one. I want a timer for um, every five seconds. Well, you can give the name, an ID, so just keep it as this. Next. Even groups. It's even, it even generates for me my groups. You can select uh, in which timer you want to include them, for example, like this. And let's finish it off with that. So just using those wizards, I think I maybe clicked uh, 10 times max. If I have a look at my disk tree, you can immediately see all the parameters I added. Not even the parameters, but even, because we have that nice linking, um, I can see my timer in here and my group, which was created. Um, and it allows me to, by just a few clicks, add all those parameters, groups, and timers. Personally, I think that's a nice improvement uh, in over, uh, overriding everything yourself. Because, yeah, we have it available in the mix. Why not track and drop it? So our new browser, very useful. Drag and drop from our loop to my protocol. And when you have multiple parameters in there, right click generate parameters. <coughs> Moving on to the snippets. I see some new colleagues have a seat. Um, my, uh, my two colleagues will help you out, uh, set everything up. Um, so you can follow the text as well. The snippets. I know what I showed you so far was um, how to create parameters from our main browser. Um, but for example, when you don't have uh, an SMP protocol, you have, for example, a serial or an HTTP, well, then you don't have a loop available and you need to create the parameters yourself. But even when you have and as it be, snippets are so useful. Let's have a look. How do you get those snippets? When you right click in a certain area in your protocol, and right click, insert snippets. And there you'll see those snippets and a nice uh, selection that you can choose from. I'll immediately demonstrate. I can again <coughs> type it myself, <coughs> parameter, and then have an ID, for example. But again, I'm not 
so much work. Mobile for mobile developers should be easy. Right click, snippets, and insert snippets. And in there, not oh, working it. This, <laughs> this, working on the hot goal. Again, an automation script. We also have nice snippets. And the uh, good to remember, we oh, select hot goal. And in there, I have my entire list. As I saw in the introduction, we have those building blocks, we have our timers, our groups, our parameters. These are all as well integrated in my snippets. But I mentioned I want a button. Okay, a button, it's a parameter. So I select my parameter. You'll see here an entire list of possibilities. For example, a basic parameter, the button, that's the one I want. We have a display parameter, um, a whole lot of possibilities, even if you're working with matrices, there's snippets for that as well. Let's select more button. As we both saw before, we have some highlighted placeholders. That's something I still need to fill in because my snippets has no idea what I want to do with my button, but I think that makes sense. I give my um, Parameter ID. I give it an uh, put in one name, very original, and then a caption. For example, um, this is a button and a button. Let me first remove some of the things I imported previously. Because we're not working with an. Um, the goes. Things are just so things we can remove. Now I have my button. I mean, imagine if you need to type that from scratch, because then you would need to remember, okay, my type, okay, it's button, so it's right, <coughs> my input uh, yeah, and it needs to be in uh, numeric text and a double, and then my button, and then I need me to specify a width, and a display, and a value. It's quite a lot to remember, so why not use the snippets? We just saw a snippet for a um, parameter, and it's also totally fine, uh, for example, for a timer. Again, right click, snippet, insert snippet, or I could use the short key. Of course, this is the one I mostly use. You press N, control, you keep it, control, press N, and then KX. And then you have that same um, list with options. Currently, I'm at the timers. So, I'm going to have a timer. Again, those placeholders. You need to specify an ID, a name. Um, it already gives me my structure. It already assumes, it just assumes correctly, that in the timer I probably want to add a group. Because, yeah, in timer you usually add to pull something at a little bit of time. What is it? Group. So, it already defines that structure for me. Oh, yeah, I think that's very useful. So the other examples, I think I uh, mentioned already quite some. Um, the protocol, what we saw, I now uh, chose for a button snippet, but if you, for example, choose a, a display parameter, that's something uh, you'll see here. Um, it's a lead. Um, it has art display through because you want to then later display it on a page. Uh, some ways of displaying, in this case it's just a number. But it's something to uh, get you started. Same for a session, for example. When you're working with uh, HTTP, um, you're not just calling something from a device, like we have with the MIP browser with SMB. You'll start the session. We have a snippet for that. So you don't need to remember it all by heart. Of course, if you want, be my guest. Um, you go to those snippets, it immediately gives me the structure 
okay, I have a session with connection and request, uh, and there I have my get, my post, uh, and I just need to specify what I want to do with it, but the structure is already there, which for me, I like it very much. These are snippets for my uh, XML codes. Um, I've mentioned it before, but you also have a part uh, C sharp. Um, even for the C sharp part, you have snippets. Um, we'll come back to that later on uh, as we eat um, those speak actions. Um, but do remember also there we have our snippets. For example, in my uh, C sharp part, if I want to have some logging, uh, I can, with possible logging, uh, with our snippets, it creates a blind for me. And I have to fill in uh, my message I want to display in my logging, and I don't need to worry about the rest. All right. Now I created my button, um, but if I would publish, nothing will change on my element because I didn't specify yet where it needs to be displayed, or maybe how it needs to be displayed. Leads me up to the next slide. But display editor. A display editor is something you can find on our list ribbon. Press display editor, and it opens up this window. Display editor. One click, and instead of now seeing my XML, I have my edit multiple pages. What do I see in there? What do I see in there? I can split up in three main components. The first one on the left is a list with all the pages in my protocol. That's useful because if I uh, have a look at my element itself, This is the same. So my display editor already gives me like a preview, a bit more than just a preview, um, but it already gives me an idea how it will look like in my DMA. Because if you just have the code, yeah, you can code-wise add some uh, pages, but yeah, it's hard to visualize. That's where our display editor is um, very useful. So, in this one, I see, okay, I have my general page um, in here. This is a special one. It's a pop-up page. Um, we have an audio page, a device page. If I want to add a new page, I have the button on the here, new page. I can give it an, uh, a name, uh, for example, uh, video. I can choose to have a normal one, or maybe one that um, is a bit wider, uh, a separator, a web page, and just go for the normal one. I add it here, and it immediately appears on my list. Maybe I don't want to have it here, but maybe um, I want it a bit up. Mm, let's put it here. That's what I liked. Uh, and maybe, well, now I have my video and audio, and my devices is a bit yeah, not really connected. Let's add a separator as well. Move that up as well. That's something I like. I created my new page, and you see here my layout. A lot of pages I already had. You see my parameters, my name, my serial number, time. With my new page, you see here by the exclamation mark, there's no parameters yet. Let's change that and let's add my button, for example. On the right, you see a list with all the parameters from my protocol. My button is this one. Okay. Simply click, add, and drop. That's all I need to do to add my parameter to my page. Let's apply the changes. Yeah, don't forget to apply it because if you would just cancel it, everything you did uh, would be gone. Apply changes and publish it. Of course, I uh, need to publish it on the correct version. Uh, let's see, it like this. 
in my DNA. Whatever I just modified in my display editor, you already see. So I added my new separator. This is just it's not a real page, but just a nice um, layout to make a difference between different sections. I have here my video and the button I created. So without having to do a lot of coding, because you just saw what I did, I immediately have my parameters. I use the snippets, my display editor, and I immediately have results. By just using that publish button, because I didn't need to do anything about our data miner, just change the version because we played around with it in the beginning. Just do your changes, publish, and the meat piece is there. Uh, for me, that's really nice because I like to see the result of my work. So I can do the coding, do the implementation, publish, you see immediately the results. There you can select, for example, I only want to have um, my parameters that I could uh, display through, so that I want to display, oh, you can play around with that. And then you take those, drag and drop them. And you have results. With our display editor, it's, as I mentioned, it's not just a, a preview. You can also do some editing with that one. The parameters here in the middle, you can, again, with some easy clicks, Enable, for example, my trend. <coughs> well, you saw so it, it's a small change. But if you have a parameter, you have some icons, the trend icon and the monitor icon. So if you click those item, uh, icons, you immediately enable it for trending and uh, monitoring. So again, no need to, to go to the code uh, and, and change it there. You click those item, icons. Don't forget to apply change, of course. And when you apply those changes, the HTML code immediately will be updated. Where it will say, okay, my monitoring is enabled or my training is enabled. Next to those alarming and trending, you can also, if you click a certain parameter, there's some small edits in there. For example, if you have your page and you say, okay, this parameter, I thought I gave it a nice description, but it's not so clear, let's change it. And click it open, change description, or you can, for example, change units, uh, change the range. If it's a percentage, it's nice to have a range from 0 to 100, for example. It's all things you can do in our display edit. Again, oh, <coughs> probably the third or fourth time I mentioned, don't forget to apply those changes. Because if you do an entire configuration, uh, add pages, add parameters there, add some changes, forget to press the button and of course all your notifications are lost. Um, but yeah, it becomes a habit to press it as well. As I mentioned, you have here the parm, uh, the uh, pages and uh, those parameters. If you press that apply change, it will close our display editor and you'll see your XML code again. It's also possible if you uh, Click on a um, parameter in your uh, layout uh, center content here. Right click it. You can go to XML. And this will immediately apply changes and go to the application for that parameter. So if you want to do some configuration that's not available in our display editor, you can right click, go to XML. Your changes will be applied and you'll immediately jump to that correct location for that parameter, and in there you can add some more tricky. Just, is everything clear in the back? Uh, you're working on it, Brody. Thanks. 
to our display editor. Next to our display editor, we also have our table editor. It's literally next to our display editor. In here, this one. Um, of course, before we use one, this is quite useful only if you have actual tables. If you don't have any tables, there's no need to uh, play around with the table editor. Um, but if you have tables, like you have here, this example, um, it's a parameter that contains the definition of a table, um, which has then, of course, some columns specified. This is uh, the interface table with an index, description, speed, and so forth. If I either click this editor, this is one way to go to it, or if I, when I have my parameter, my table, click the arrow next to my table, you can also go to edit table and it will open our table editor. With that arrow, I just wanted to add as well, um, it is possible to have some nice uh, features in there as well. For example, you can immediately add a column, which then adds it uh, underneath as a new parameter uh, in the table, or you can choose to include that table in a certain group, or generate a new trigger or a quick action, just similar to that snippets, but it really gives you some suggestions. I like um, to have some linking in the table. Let's try it out. Of course, as I mentioned, you need to have a table, but in the protocol you imported, I've provided one for you. We have a device table. I mentioned that arrow. If I click that one, I'll have my edit table and some of the options. But I just want to edit my table, I want to make some changes. Um, I can press my icon directly, and it will open my table editor. Or, I can press my table editor in the DIS ribbon and I'll see the same uh, page. What do you do say, uh, see here? Well, of course, you try to keep it uh, uniform and then have it a bit the same as our uh, display editor. Um, however, now on the left, instead of pages, I see all the tables I specified in my protocol. Uh, in the import um, protocol uh, for you guys, yeah, it's just one table, um, but that's not to play around with. You can select those tables, and you'll see in the middle all my columns <coughs> on top, and underneath all my displayed columns. There is a difference. Um, I'll come back to that. Uh, and again, on the right, we have a list of your parameters. Same as with um, my uh, display editor, I can select certain parameter and drag and drop it into my table. For example, I have my... Now it doesn't, doesn't of course make sense, but let me add my serial number and you'll see it, it's been added in here. Or my name, drag, drop, and I immediately create a column for that table. Without having to touch the XML code, Drag and drop. In there, then I need to specify which type it is. For example, is it um, SNP? Um, you'll see here some reduced types because um, we're not working with a simulation on our DNA. I'm just hard coded filling in some data. So, um, reduced. <coughs> and I mentioned there was a difference between the one on top and the one in the read. The one on top are the columns in my table. So for example, you can have a really big table with hundreds of columns pulling data from the device, but you can decide, okay, it's nice to have that data, but actually my uh, user, my operator, doesn't need to see all of those. It's nice for me to have and store in my database and to have some trending in there, but my uh, operator doesn't need to see that. What we define here underneath is what you will see in my element. For example, now you just see four columns, but I say, okay, my name, that's also something I'd like to see. I can enable my display, and it immediately appears here as well. So on top is which columns my table contains, 
in the mid and switch columns I will see when I uh, have an element that uses that plot. Um, and then of course we have uh, some nice options. Um, it is possible to have a read-write column. Uh, you'll see it here. Okay, you have uh, for that column with index three, you have a write text to it. We can change the description in our table editor, and if we then apply changes, it will be adjusted as well in our XML. Uh, as I mentioned, you can specify if you want to display it in a certain type. You can choose to save it. Um, can be nice. Uh, for example, if you then restart your element, um, you need to see your data already. Of course, when you're working with an actual device, um, yeah, you want to have it in an exact representation. So, if it, there's something wrong with connection, you'd rather not have data in there. But you can see, okay, I don't have data, and then you can investigate. Uh, but it can be a nice option to save. Uh, if you're working with some relationships between tables, you have color keys. Quite some options. For the one on top, for the one uh, at the bottom or display columns, of course it's more specified to my layout. For example, okay, I have a certain column, what needs to be the width of that column? For example, I know it will be a, a long string value with quite some characters, and we can make it a bit wider. Um, we can choose to have uh, these two columns need to have again those two icons with trending <coughs> and monitoring, but also available here in my table. At the end, we even can uh, choose a certain sorting. For example, I want to sort um, by date, or I want to sort by name. Uh, it's all possible here in the one at the bottom. In the bottom, everything related to layout. On top is more the, the yeah, which data I want to retrieve. Ribbon on top here, or directly when you have a table parameter with that ID. I'll quickly go over the slides because that's what I just mentioned. Um, so we have the drag and drop function. You can easily drag and drop something from here to there, um, and then use a display. Um, yeah, same for the, the levels here as well. The options uh, or read or display or save uh, for a key and the ones uh, at the bottom. Oh, I did forget to mention that as well. Um, just like we had with the display editor, it is possible to uh, select a certain um, parameter um, and do again some editing. So you can either do um, that in the display editor, but also in the table editor, you can, for example, uh, change the units or the range. Um, it's also possible in there. And then the options here with or with uh, Instagram and alignment and trending. And the needs, you have some options. Um, yeah, I won't go over those. Uh, you have quite some options in data miner. This is just getting started. So uh, let's move to our uh, quick action. Uh, uh, quick action. One say Q action. Quick action. Now, what is quick action? I mentioned this before. It is possible to have some C-sharp codes inside my plot box. Um, how do we do that? Well, again, you can type it, but I will just recommend the snippets. Of course, you need to specify and add it into the correct location. We do have the structure. So I want to have the quick action. <laughs> needs to be inside my quick actions bag. I add the snippet. For me, I hold the control KX. have my DIS protocol. Now I want the quick action. We have the choice to have a pre-compile time, um, but we already have one of those. I'll just go for quick actions. And there I have my code. <coughs> I need to specify just again those placeholders. I need to give it an ID, I need to give it a name, and maybe a trigger. I'll just edit this. And then here I have my C sharp. Things you're used to, uh, some of the usings, the using system, using single text, uh, 
um, some data miner scripting. Then we have a class, some comments, we have our run, try catch, but some nothing in there. But this, if I type in here, I'm going to have uh, some more logging protocol dot log. It's C sharp, but I'm typing it in an XML file. So, for example, I don't have any intelligence, which is not really nice because yeah, Visual Studio it's quite uh, extensive and it's, uh, it allows me to have intelligence and so on. And I want to use it as well in my protocol. Again, or the log with this will help us out with that. <coughs> when you have a quick action, just like we created or snippet or an existing one, before a quick action, we have for ID. Do either edit my quick action or edit all my quick actions. That will just open all your quick actions. If I press that icon, so the one I just created, I press that icon, that's what you say. Let's just say here. What will it do? It will open up for me a second file. But this time, yeah, it's not an XML file because that's what my protocol is defining. It will open a CS file. And this CS file allows me to actually use the features from Visual Studio. If I type, for example, um, I want to have a date you immediately see that selection. Okay, I have a date time, uh, time equals and so forth. So by using an icon here, the quick action editor, it opens my uh, CS file. Um, I can type things in there. I specified that in our quick action we also have our snippets. So the same, control KX. I have one like this. And I have, for example, a snippet to get a column, to get all the values of a certain column. Um, let me just give the example of logging. I have logging. Um, I can specify, okay, this is uh, going bad, for example. I have some logging, and then when this is run, you'll see that in your um, data miner. Now, what is nice is if I save, just uh, have my save. If I have a look now in my XML, you see whatever I have typed into my CS file immediately gets added in my XML file as well. So I can use all the benefits of having IntelliSense, having those, uh, yeah, just you working with classes, with inheritance, everything is possible in here. And if I save it, it's included, embedded in my XML and I can just publish, and it will be usable in my DNA. And of course, you can realize, yeah, once you have that CS file open, it's C sharp, so your imagination is the limit. You can do whatever you like in there, um, program-wise. So, apart from our display editor for our layout pages, have a table editor for tables and also our uh, quick action editor for our C sharp parts. Now I did some things. I added some parameters in there, I added the page, I modified the table, have some uh, C sharp. Of course, I might have quite uh, a lot of confidence in my uh, ability to write awesome code. However, it doesn't hurt to validate that. Um, because I might, in my uh, enthusiasm, miss something or mistype something. The validator, integrated validator. You saw here our display editor, table editor, it's also here so The first one is our validate. <coughs> if you press that validate button, automatically underneath your protocol, you'll see our this validator. What can you see here? I mentioned this very briefly already. This is everything that might be wrong in your protocol. 
both XML and a syntax. For example, if you forgot to close a certain tag, um, it will uh, display it here. For example, if you have uh, two parameters with the same uh, index, with the same ID, well, we cannot have that, so uh, we don't want that in our DMA. It's also something we cache here. XML syntax, but also with a kind of logic. This already goes a bit far, uh, more deep, um, but uh, if you have a certain um, items connected to each other that are not possible, for example, you have a quick action inside a group, but that might uh, appear in there as well. It appears here in a nice list, and it's color-coded um, from critical, major, minor warning. These are disabilities you might recognize from your DMA. <coughs> it is because they are the same. Um, it even goes that far if we change your alarm color in your DMA. For example, critical is purple and major is pink. That's possible. It will change it here as well. So to have it uniform, um, would recommend it unless you would like pink, for example. Um, but it's nice. And of course, yeah, when there's something missing, in here, I have critical, missing back, okay, I know, it's critical, I know, I need to add it before my element can run smoothly. Or, if I don't add it, my element won't even start up, because, yeah, it's quite critical, it needs it to run correctly. Uh, yeah, so it is sort of by priority. Um, of course, yeah, critical, always fix it. Uh, I would, and say it. I need to say it fix everything, but I mean, a warning, maybe a minor, you can ignore a bit, but critical, it's not okay. Maybe it's critical for a uh, part. For Let's uh, have a look at our protocol. Did we miss something? Validate. Oh, oh, we did. Okay, this is a uh, Something that went wrong. <coughs> uh, let's first have a look at the minor. This is an easy one. When you have this one, you can click on my warning, my minor. I can click it there, and it immediately some jumps to the correct page. It's a minor, but it's not that critical. But yeah, this allows us to have very nice uh, drivers. It says it's missing my tag suffix. Okay, you can add. Or let me give a, a, a nice example. Uh, if I would name this two. And then add it. You would see here, I have a duplicate parameter ID. So it immediately knows if I have the same uh, ID, it immediately shows. So I can go here and change it to this one. If I validate again, it disappears. This one is probably because of my quick action I added. Let me remove that. And validate again. There you go. There it is. So because in my quick action I just added the snippets without actually filling in uh, certain things, uh, it's gone. Um, so it's nice that you can click there and it jumps to the correct page, but even, again, goes a bit further. For example, you have certain uh, guidelines, it's guideline, that for um, description needs to start with a capital letter. If I validate this one, You'll see it here and here. So, click here and I can edit it. Simon, would you know how I can trigger that uh, autofix? For which uh, I, was th I was thinking it was. Uh, yes, it's uh, for you. Ah, yes, exactly. If I validate, yeah, there it is. So, of course, the validator is constantly evolving. Um, some of the checks are yeah, already there a while. 
but as soon as we have a newer, uh, newer checks in there, yeah, we make them fancier. Um, and for example, one of those uh, newer warnings is um, that your name on the parameter can have spaces. Uh, preferred that it's uh, all with underscore, for example. And none of those, you'll see that icon. It's like the, the, the tool uh, bar. You can click here and ask fix. Fix this error. And then I don't even need to do anything. It's fixed this by default. So if I have a lot of parameters in there with spaces, you can see fix, fix all those errors. And immediately all those parameters, all those spaces are removed and replaced with other scores. This is just a small example of this name. But you can imagine that this can be very helpful. You type or whatever you like in your protocol, some parameters, some groups, you validate. For our developers, we always recommend first validate before publish. Doesn't hurt, just one another click. Have a look, if there's no criticals, no major uh, minors, publish, and you'll see your protocol appear in your DNA flawless. So, also a really nice one uh, to use. We have a refactor. Um, I'll just briefly mention it uh, because it's there, um, but it's actually not uh, really used. This was previously for um, for uh, older drivers um, that weren't according to guidelines. Um, we had a refactor button, but it would uh, fix some cases, add some of the syntax. But the protocols you're working with uh, today um, shouldn't uh, are already compliant to the guidelines, so that should be fine. <coughs> but I'm just mentioning it because it's in the ribbon as well. And then the last one is live testing and debugging. This again goes back to our C sharp part. We have a quick actions where you can open our uh, quick action editor, which opens our uh, CSV file, uh, CS file, sorry. Um, we have some groups, some methods, and so forth, and we hope it works. I mean, again, we're quite confident, we're not 100% sure. We publish it, we run our elements, and we see oh, it's not that the result we expect. So I told it was okay. That's why we have our live testing and debugging to help you out. This is the image you saw in the beginning. So our protocol editor, our display editor, table editor, quick action editor, we went over those. Or publish, we publish it in our uh, elements, we can use it in our DMA. And now I'll mention those debugging. With our debugging, we'll call it disinject. Let's inject here. With our disinject, we'll replace the quick action that is run on my DMA with the quick action I have in my Visual Studio. So normally when you have your elements, it's running, okay, you have a certain trigger, your uh, sharp code is run, it's all behind the screens, and you just see a result. With my debugging, if I enable that one, it will not use the quick action on my DMA, but use the one I have open in my CS file. It's very fancy, because this allows me to do quite some nice debugging in there. Now, first, how do we do this? We have our disinject and our tools. And again, it opens one of those side plates. This inject, because we are connected to our um, data miner, we have in here a list of all our elements. We select the element we want to debug, we select which quick actions we want to debug, and we attach it. Once we are attached, we can work with breakpoints. I don't know if you already have some experience with breakpoints, but you can place in here, this is an example, a breakpoint, and then whenever something happens in your element, it's run, and it would start with the um, C sharp part, instead of using one of the data miner, it will jump to the one I have open. And with the breakpoint, it will stop there. And then, as a developer, this allows me to step by step run over my code. 
and immediately in my uh, file, I see my values, my variables um, being filled in. So this allows me to step by step go over, okay, I got this value, now I'm doing some calculations with it, this is my result, and step by step, just like you would have with another, any other projects uh, in Visual Studio, run step by step. I mean, for me personally, that's very nice. Because before you would make ads after in between every line of code, a line line, so you get follow along. It's why quite some work. I see <laughs> somebody here already uh, getting tired of the thoughts alone. With this one, inject, and you can run over your code, see immediately what goes wrong or what goes right, um, and change it at what's common. The last one um, is our disk settings. And this is just um, me going over all the settings. There's quite some possibilities, but I do want to um, go over them to let you know where you can find stuff. With this, we have our settings. This is something I didn't mention yet, our help. Um, this is not the same as our DMA help or data miner help. That is when you would have your DMA and you have the help. This help is very specific to our DIS. So if you ever have a question, you know, open a display editor and you're not sure about a certain option you have in there, with this help, we can look it up. Well, our DIS help because it's under our DIS uh, menu. When you open the settings, you'll see your pop-up with quite some, uh, we have eight web pages. We already used some to connect to our DMA to get your license. Let's go over those. DMA is the first one, there you need to specify to which data miner you connect. In our case, it was the Red Sky and OBE. You can have a local host, you can have an ID. You fill in your credentials, so you think um, you're a Windows user, if you have your domain integrated, uh, domain users integrated with your DMA, that's also possible. Test connection is a button, if you click that one, you'll see immediately the results if the connection was successful or not. The next one is our debugging. Uh, debugging, um, we saw that we have um, in our case section, when you open it, some instances, um, like our snippets. Well, this is, th those two are by default, um, some of our DLL locations. It is possible to have your custom DLL um, added in there as well, and then you'll be able to use it in your uh, quick action. It's a nice option. It is also possible to do some remote debugging. Um, what I mentioned with the disinject, that uh, when you have an, um, a local system, you can inject it from there. If your DMA would be on another system, you need to enable those uh, remote debugging. So this is debugging everything related to quick actions. You need to set that all up on that remote DMA. Yeah, there is a, a guide. Yeah, we're going to say that. Okay. <laughs> there is a certain guide um, to indeed set it up. <laughs> Then the class library, I want to um, go over this one. Uh, this is something you'll see, I'm not, I'm not sure if some of you are following the uh, last session, so the third session of this red spot um, with our latest features. This is one of our latest features, and um, we have some um, already code made for you that uh, you can use. Um, interfaces, some personal uh, preferences. Um, would you like to see this description instead of the name? Um, if you want to hide some results for the comments, just personal settings you can uh, specify. And the MIP location, um, you saw when you opened our MIP browser, there were already some MIPs in there. Uh, the phase one, for example. Um, it will first look at this uh, location that you specified. Of course, it is possible with our MIP uh, browser and second step files to add multiple locations in there um, and work with. This is just the default one to look at. Then DCP. This is where uh, you uh, fill in your DCP user um, to get, yeah, of course, your license. <coughs> you did that this morning. Um, and also to have our updates. Every month there is a new release, a new version of our DIS. Um, if you have this one checked, it automatically uh, alerts you when there's a new version. And you just need to press update, and it does it for you. So then, 
not every month we do have a Rohan CP check which version it is. It's then uh, by default. Um, we also have an insider build. Um, this is for Spagen internally. It's your know, beta testing. You could do it, but yeah, we don't guarantee it. But um, every beta uh, that we test a month later is already included in the main one. So um, I think we can make a, a month. Um, or there's also the option to check manually if there's any updates. Uh, others uh, for uh, some encoding. And then here we have uh, the version of the DIS you're using. Um, currently it's 2.19 you should have. Next month it's 2.20. Uh, and if you want some nice, uh, nice text to read you for bedtime, uh, you find the license agreement in there as well. <laughs> 